I heard from a 17 year old kid at a conference recently who was already a millionaire by selling shoes on Instagram. And I was really impressed with this kid for one thing because he was on stage in an event giving a, a lecture to like 2000 adults walking us through his business model and he seemed completely comfortable. I mean, he, he the way he acted was kind of like a, a normal teenager, but just on stage, it was like he was hanging out with his friends. He was just explaining, yeah, this is what I did. And he seemed completely confident, completely comfortable, which was amazing to me because I was a total mess when I was 17. And one thing that he said really stuck out to me, and it was something that he said just kind of in passing, like it wasn't even the focus of his presentation. He was teaching us how to sell shoes on Instagram, essentially, which I really have no interest in. You know, it's, it's not my thing. My thing is selling courses and coaching. I have a few businesses doing that, and I'm focused on that, so I'm not gonna go start like some Instagram shoe business. But there was one thing in particular that he said in passing I thought was really interesting. He said that he came from a family of entrepreneurs. And I can't remember the kid's name, by the way. If I did, I would give him credit. But I heard from a lot of people at that conference, and so I don't remember all the names. But anyway, he said that he came from a family of entrepreneurs. And I, I thought that was really interesting because that shows how you can have somebody who is a millionaire at 17. And by the way, his business model did not rely on any big loans from his parents, right? He didn't have any big inheritance. This was selling shoes on Instagram, which you could get started for basically no money. And most people know that people who are rich tend to have kids who grow up to be rich. And people who are poor tend to have kids who grow up to be poor. And people who are middle class tend to have kids that grow up to be middle class like them. But most people don't understand why that is, right? They see somebody who's rich that came from a rich family and they think, oh, it's just inheritance. It's just generational wealth um, passed down through the generations. And while certainly that's true in some cases, I think that it's missing the larger point because you see so many people that, that um, come into their wealth through winning the lottery or people that come from poor, poor families and become professional athletes. And then a little, a few years after they've, they've acquired this enormous wealth, then they're broke again, right? So the, if it's just the inheritance, then they would be broke again in a few years, just like the poor people that come into money. And so I don't think that's true. In fact, I think that people who are successful, especially people who are self-made successes, tend to pass down certain knowledge and certain habits to their children that result in them becoming successful themselves. And there are three things in particular that I think are the main factors in this. The main things that successful people pass down to their kids that make their kids become effortlessly successful themselves while the rest of everybody else is struggling. And so the first of those things, I believe, is mentorship. The child who is born into a family of entrepreneurs has natural mentorship um, from a very, very early age. He has people who already know what to do, who are already successful, that are spending a lot of time with him and telling him exactly what he needs to do in order to have the same success. And I've noticed that just about every successful person in the world has a mentor, right? And not all of them are lucky enough to be born with mentors, but all of them find a mentor one way or another. I remember when I first figured this out was, um, I was in my, probably my mid twenties, and I met a kid from Finland who was, <clears throat> he was 19 years old at the time, and he had already made like several hundred thousands of dollars by doing uh, social media marketing as an agency, something like that. And so I asked him, you know, like, how did you do it? And what he told me was that he found a guy on the internet that was kind of a hotshot um, marketing guy. His name was Dan Locke. Probably some of you guys have heard of him. And so he must have paid Dan Locke a lot of money and flew all the way from Finland, his home in Finland, to Vancouver, Canada. This was, you know, kind of before everybody had Zoom and to, was personally mentored by Dan Locke. And so he was already earning hundreds of thousands of dollars by the time he was 19 because he had a mentor. And the mentor serves two really important functions. Number one is to actually tell you what to do and give you guidance. But number two, and perhaps just as important, 
is to normalize the idea of being rich, normalize the idea of being successful. If you were from a poor or a middle class family and you have poor or middle class friends, then just the idea of, of the world that rich people live in is so foreign to you that when you start hanging out with a mentor who is rich, you find out that being rich and thinking like a rich person is normal to him. Right, and that starts to rub off on you. You start to think, oh, this isn't such this pie in the sky, lofty ideal. This is something that's normal. And the more it becomes normal in your own mind, the more likely you are to get there, the easier it becomes to get there. So the number one reason that rich parents tend to have rich kids is because of the natural mentorship that comes along with it. The second reason is because of starting early. Rich parents, successful parents, parents who have started a, a highly profitable business are not crazy about the idea of having their children go through 18 years of school and then four years of college and maybe two or four more years of college to get an advanced degree before they really do anything in the world, right? That's not the way that entrepreneurs work. And so they get their kids started early. And I've noticed this hanging out with entrepreneurs that, um, you know, I have a friend that that brings his 11-year-old son to all these business conferences, right? Because he wants his son to get started early. And, and the kid likes it. He enjoys it. Um, but starting early is huge. And I thought about this. You know, if this guy, and I'm not sure, I don't remember his, his exact backstory, but if this guy had gotten started when he was 12 years old, uh, which is actually pretty normal for entrepreneur households from what I've seen. If he got started when he was 12 years old, by the time he's 17, he's already had five years of experience, right? Where by contrast, I got started in this when I was 30 years old. And so now I'm, now I'm 34, I've had four years experience. So this kid is literally half my age and already has more experience than I do, right? So starting early is absolutely huge. And also, I would almost guarantee that this kid was homeschooled and, and just about every entrepreneur parent wants to homeschool their child because why would they, having had a lot of success, having made millions of dollars themselves, then turn over their kids to be educated, to be brought up by some low paid government worker who makes like $45,000 a year? Why on earth would you want that? I mean, if you're successful, you are, you are absolutely going to fight that tooth and nail. You are going to do everything that you can to get your kids out of the pernicious influence of the miseducational system that pays people very low wages to brainwash your children into a poverty mindset. So you can almost guarantee that any successful parent is going to at the very least, put their kids in a, a fancy private school, but much better than that is to homeschool them and cut, up, cut out all the crap, all the junk that they get taught in the government school system and teach them what's actually useful, what's actually going to help them. So they're using their school time starting businesses at 12 years old so that they're already millionaires by the time they're 17. So that's the second big advantage. And by the way, um, I'm gonna tell you how I apply these to my own life, despite not being in that situation, not having been raised by successful entrepreneur parents. Now, the third advantage is knowing how to think. There is a very, very big difference between the way that people who are successful think and people who are unsuccessful think. And people who are born into a family of successes have the massive advantage of being indoctrinated into a successful pattern of thinking from an early age. Whereas the rest of us, mostly, are programmed with all sorts of limiting beliefs, such as you're not X enough, what I call you're not X enough, so you're not uh, old enough, you're, you're too old, you don't have the right personality, like uh, people will find all sorts of reasons to tell you that you're not gonna make it, you're not good enough, you're not gonna succeed. There's something wrong with you that's gonna make you unable to succeed. Or they tell you that everything that has the promise of improving your life is a scam, 
right? Any business that you can start, oh, that's a scam. Any mentor you find, that's a scam. Any course you take, scam. Um, YouTube video is a scam. A book is a scam. Like everything that could possibly make your life better is a scam because they've been so beaten down by their own life that they can't imagine anything else uh, that, that anything could be better. Or in some cases, because they don't really want you to succeed because that would make them look bad by comparison. Unfortunately, that happens a lot. Or they'll, they'll uh, bring you up to believe that rich people are evil and that the only way to get ahead in life is to by beating other people's down, by, by stealing from other people, by taking advantage of other people. So rich people are evil and you should never want to be one of those. Or even worse, they'll try to convince you that po being poor is pleasing to God that it's virtuous to be poor, that God wants you to be poor and God will reward you for your poverty when you get to heaven. Um, you know, as if being poor and, and completely unable to help your neighbor is somehow what God wanted and, and the abundance that God created on this earth shouldn't be for God's children, it only, is only for the evil people. But people convince themselves of this, again, probably because it's easier than taking responsibility for the fact that they have not figured out how to be rich, that they have not figured out how to have the life that they secretly wish that they had. There are so many of these limiting beliefs that get programmed into us by our environment and by the people that are supposed to be educating us and supposed to be helping us to come up in the world. So for me specifically, I mean, I had people who were very close to me tell me things like, oh, I'm never gonna make it because I don't have a salesy personality. Or um, somebody else close to me told me that, that what I was doing was promoting scams. Uh, and, you know, I don't think that that was malicious. I don't think these, these people were trying to hold me down. I think that's just the way that they had been brought up and they never questioned it, right? And, and probably, they were, prob they were trying to protect me from disappointment. And so that's something that most of us are going to have to deal with. But the good news is that we can deal with it. And in fact, we can use all three of these things to our advantage. So I wanna tell you how I've uh, used all of these to my advantage, despite you know not being born into it. I've had to m make a little bit more effort to make it work, but I have in fact made it work. So mentorship. I find mentors. I find people who have a result that I want to get and I get them to show me how they did it and how I can do it. And, and so sometimes I have to pay them a lot of money for the privilege, but it's worth it, right? Because if I'm paying somebody $15,000 and I'm making 500,000 in return, it's just, it's a no brainer. So I look for mentors, specifically mentors who have the result that I want to get and who have done it in a, a method that I would like to do, right? Because I mean, I could, you know, I could pay this 17 year old to mentor me and show me how to make a business selling shoes on Instagram, but I don't want to sell shoes on Instagram, right? Like I said, I'm doing courses and coaching. So I find people that have made money in courses and coaching. And I try to find people who've made money in the, you know, the closest way as I have and as recently as possible too, because there's some people that, you know, they got started 20 years ago. They had great success and more power to them. But if they teach me their method today, probably it's not going to work because the, the world's changed a lot in 20 years. But anyway, whenever I, I want to learn how to do something new, learn how to do something better, to improve some part of my business, and of course to start my business in the first place, I always look for a mentor. Uh, second thing is starting early. Now, there's nothing I can do with that, unfortunately. Um, I can't start, I can't, can't go back in my time machine and, and start earlier than um, I already did. Uh, but the, the best thing that you can do there is just start now right? Start now. Even if you're 70 years old, right? If you're 70 years old and you start now, you could easily be a millionaire by the time you're 75, right? So, I mean, I could see, you know, I met that kid that was, that was 19. He probably started when he was 17. I, I don't know exactly, but he, I, I mean, I could have seen that and said, wow, this kid got started a lot earlier than me. It's too late for me. 
Um, and, and you know, there's so many excuses. It's too late for me, uh, you know, that the opportunity is passed, which is always a lie, by the way. The opportunity is expanding like every single minute. It's getting, there's more and more opportunity all the time. It's just that it's always changing. And so if we're looking back on the old opportunities and saying, oh, I wish I bought Bitcoin when it cost $100, well, yeah, but there's something right now that's the equivalent of Bitcoin when it was $100. And so we have to be a little bit more forward thinking and not think, oh, we missed it or we're too old now, right? So whatever it is, you can get started now. In five years from now, you can be a millionaire. And by the way, I'm not saying that it's definitely like exactly five years. I mean, it depends what kind of business you're in. It depends on how well you do of it. it. Depends on how good your mentor is. Like it depends on a lot of things. It might be more than five years or it might be a lot less than five years. It, it all depends. And then the last thing that I've done is to change the way that I think, right? Again, I was brought up in a very middle class mindset where you um, go to school and you get good grades and then you go to college and I even got a master's degree and then get a good job and then work at your good job and save in your retirement account. Um, don't ever go into debt, right? Because, because debt is terrible. And it was all about being responsible and, and not taking risks and um, keeping your expectations low essentially like, oh, you can be, you can be comfortable and you can be provided for, um, and you should never really want more than that. And, and that's the background that I came from. So it took a lot of effort for me to break out of those habits of thought and I'm still working on it, right? This is still a battle I fight every single day. It's a work in progress. It's not like I'm there yet. But the, I found some, some great tools that helped me to do that. And that is really to immerse myself as much as possible into this new way of thinking, into the rich way of thinking, and avoid the old middle class way of thinking as much as I possibly can. And so how do I do that? Well, I read books by people that are um, have results that I like to get. I buy courses. I watch YouTube videos. I listen to podcasts. I immerse myself in positive content, positive material. And by the way, if you like some positive content, positive material, subscribe to my channel, take a look around. I've got a lot of it because this has been my mission for a long time now. I do my best to associate with positive people. And again, that's one of the biggest reasons you find a mentor is that your mentor will inspire you to be better. Whereas probably, you know, your friends from, from childhood are just going to whine and complain about how life isn't fair and um, you know talk about football and, and useless crap that is not gonna get you anywhere. And then I also do my best to get rid of negative influences. So I barely go on social media anymore because social media is just a cesspit of negativity. Um, I get rid of negative people in my life for the most part. I mean, you know, if I'm not gonna like, <laughs> disown my family just because they're complaining too much, but I try to limit my exposure to negative people. I, I limit my exposure to TV, to movies, to news, um, which I, I mean, not totally, but I carefully curate what it is that I watch, what it is that I listen to, because most of it is, is super negative and is putting those negative mindsets into your brain is indoctrinating you with those toxic ways of thinking. I heard a statistic once that the average 18 year old, and I might be messing up the numbers a bit, but you get the point. The average 18 year old has already seen on TV 40,000 people be murdered by rich people, <laughs> right? In TV and movies, because movies and TV uh, push this idea that rich people are evil just constantly over and over and over again. And I suspect that that's by design, that the um, Hollywood and the news and the TV are all controlled by the same interests that do not have your best interests in mind. But that's a subject for another video. And the same thing is true with music. I, I used to listen to such negative music. And you know, how many artists that millions of people listen to were so depressed that they killed themselves? Right, and so you're listening to their music and you're, you're being inculcated with their depression. It's absolutely horrible for your mental state. So you wanna get rid of those negative influences as much as you possibly can. 
So if you had a middle class upbringing like I did that was all about being safe and being responsible, or even worse, if you had a poor upbringing, which is all about um, complaining and feeling oppressed and chasing cheap pleasures, well, that will have gotten seeped into your brain somewhat, but the good news is that you can remove that. You are the creator of your own destiny. You do not have to follow the mold of your parents and your grandparents or your teachers or whoever taught you to be the way that you are. If you would like to be rich, if you would like to be successful, it is within the reach of anybody now in this internet era. And if you like a positive message to reprogram your brain for success, like I said, take a look at my channel, and in particular I recommend this video, all about the number one trap that destroys most people's dreams and how you can avoid it.